In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our first lesson, we heard a story of the death of Moses. In the book of Deuteronomy, just before this story, you can read his spiritual testament, which is called the Song of Moses. It's a beautiful confession of faith, and it goes like this. For I will reclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice, the God of faithfulness without iniquity. Just and right is he. Moses remembers the life he has lived with God. He remembers the adventures of a people formed by faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He also remembers the disappointment of God as his faithfulness is put to the test over and over again by the infidelity of his people. The Song of Moses is about the faithfulness of God to an unfaithful people. It's as if the people wanted to put God's fidelity to the test. But God remains faithful. He remains close to his people. That's what Moses remembers. And if you were to write a song of your life, is that what you'd remember? How God has remained faithful to you and blessed you? When Moses makes his confession of faith, he's on the threshold, you remember, of the promised land. He's also on the threshold of his death. He was 120 years old. But scripture says in our first lesson is, I was not weak. In an older translation is, I was not dim. So he still had his capacity to see, literally to see. But the scripture also means that he could see symbolically. Moses, it means, could see things that younger people couldn't see. That is the true meaning of things. And many older people share the gift of sight that Moses had. They also can see the true meaning of things. They have a wisdom that I think it takes a lifetime to receive. As Cicero wrote, the Roman statesman, there is assuredly nothing dearer to a person than wisdom. And though age takes away all else, it can bring us that. So Moses' undimmed eye was a precious gift. And this gift enabled him to pass on something precious in his turn. It enabled him to pass on the legacy of his long experience of life, 120 years. So he could tell younger people, like his assistant and successor Joshua, what he sees. He could tell them things they cannot yet see for themselves. An old age that's granted this kind of clarity, an undimmed eye, is a precious gift to those of us who are younger. Because there are things you can't learn from books or even from the internet, but only person to person, from lived experience. I think that listening personally and directly to someone who has the experience of a life lived with God is irreplaceable. And this is how, of course, the faith used to be transmitted from the old to the young, in families, in churches, in communities. Now, my parents aren't Christians, neither were my grandparents, but I was blessed to know a holy monk already when I was trained to be a priest. He was in his 80s when I knew him, but I received so much from going to see him for spiritual direction. He was someone who'd been a leader in the struggle against apartheid in South Africa. He could tell me what it was like to be persecuted by secret police, um, and about the tragedy of the death of Steve Biko, who he was close to. I learned a lot from him about life, from someone who'd lived four times as long as me when we knew each other. I think a relationship like this is what the word tradition means. Sometimes people are critical of you know, tradition, their understanding of tradition. But traditio in Latin means handing on, just that, handing on. The word comes from the same Latin source, the word traitor. Traitor is someone who hands on secrets. My spiritual director at the end of his life handed on some of his wisdom to me. And for that, I'll always be grateful. Alas. Fewer and fewer young people get to have this kind of experience today. There's been a breakdown in the person-to-person -person transmission of the faith from the old to the young. And I think this may be one reason why so few of them are now present in the churches. Their elders are often Christians. They have the wisdom of the faith. But today, my, your wisdom is not recognized. Your wisdom is not honored. But we honour your wisdom at this church. And we long for you to be able to pass it on. 
I think we should be more like the Greeks. The Greek culture honors old age. If you go to a monastery or convent in Greece, you call the abbot Geronda, which means old man. Abbesses are called Gerondissima, Gerondissa. They're called that even if they're not actually old because of their spiritual authority, because old age in Greece is identified with wisdom and closeness to God. Alas, I'm not sure if this is how we think about old age or value old age. But I think younger people should listen to the wisdom of older people, just as the children of Israel listened to the Song of Moses. Perhaps that's how those who are older enter the Promised Land that God desires for every generation. They enter when they offer to the young the beautiful initiation of their witness and pass on the story of their faith, of a lifetime lived with God and the mercy of God, the faithfulness of God. Perhaps guided by the Lord Jesus, this is how all of us, older and younger together, will enter into his kingdom of life and love. Amen.